Uh, so that's JSW uh, headquarters at DKC. Uh, it's a steel building for, uh, of course, uh, steel made. And uh, there was an absolute that we would use steel for the project in every part of it. And uh, it was a challenge, as I understand it. This was before my time at the front. And uh, it was a very precisely executed building, uh, sort of high-end design, uh, pretty high budget for obvious reasons. And uh, we had, of course, the entire support of the client for the uh, availability and the fabrication of steel. So uh, it's an entirely steel structure. As, as I said, the site is sort of I-shaped, and the building footprint takes its shape after that. And there's a there's an oval-shaped atrium in the middle, so your floor plates on either side are narrow, generating uh, one of the main ideas of sustainability in terms of energy use, so you have daylight. And also there's a lovely aspect for the, for the occupants to always have that transparency. Now, uh, I'll try and keep thinking about steel as we go through this. You can tell by the atrium design, and also when you see some aspects of the structural shell, which I'll show you, that this is a steel building could not be a steel building. So there's an elegance about the frugal use of uh, members. Uh, there's a clear definition of the lateral supports at two ends, internally two ends of the atrium. And we were able to get the uh, skin the way we wanted to in, in good measure because of the steel structure. You see it there uh, on the left side. There are also some lateral bracing elements at the ends of uh, both corners on opposite sides. And then the prow comes to a point on two sides with the two entrances. So it's really sort of, a, in the formal sense of the word, an elegant solution, very site driven, and also driven by the way you want people to work uh, in a corporate headquarters. Those are some of the stats which you can take a quick look at. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, uh, I would say that uh, even in the Indian environment of corporate life, it's a fairly democratic building and that everybody has wonderful places to work, but then within that, for obvious reasons of, um, of how the company works and the people they meet, uh, the two top floors are, are quite distinct, they're corporate floors, uh, with very exquisite uh, interiors. I think it's been a single project uh, in our firm where we've had uh, just a very, very high level of execution, even in the interiors. It's the whole element of steel, showing steel, how the building was put together, how the building was finished, uh, is, is really quite, quite dependent on the fact that it's a steel building. Likewise, uh, for the other Jindola, uh, in, in Delhi, there was uh, this project, which was done uh, sort of in three volumes connected in the middle. And I believe it's a composite uh, concrete steel structure. And then, of course, the, the sort of what I call the uh, sort of delicate nature of trellises, etc., which you can only do in steel. Uh, you can see that up front. So there too, the form making, uh, to some degree, the cantilever pieces were were done with the aid of steel in combination with concrete. And you have a close-up shot there of the steel trellis making. Uh, it's sort of the landmark uh, aspect of the building comes to life with the entrance, uh, which you probably couldn't do in the same way with. Uh, Concrete, although the sort of might tell you that you can, you probably would. Uh, just some shots of the site uh, with that showing the entrance again and the canopy of the canopies. Uh, we did Nashik Airport uh, some time back, and uh, if you will, I'll take the license to say that it's not what we wanted it to be originally. There were some serious uh, budgetary cutbacks. So basically that bow uh, truss element was supposed to be that throughout the zing back and forth, back and forth, very elegant, very simple. Do it, walk away from it, and it's, it's beautiful. Uh, instead, we had to incorporate a box, and the only, only elements of the uh, beautiful truss work was at the, at the entrance point. The uh, airport is not yet fully under commission. It's getting there. So that's the element that uh, receives you that celebrates travel, celebrates the notion of uh, sort of aircraft in the sense of its uh, form. And of course, it serves as a, a canopy for the arrival departure. And there you see it under construction. 
and there you also see the box in the back, which I've got to take out of the slide, but it's there, so it's going to stay. And that's another view. You see the two side by side here, the more uh, uh, rectilinear structure on the right, uh, those showing through the bottom there in the engine's uh, truss work. Again, definitely a steel structure. You can see the elements in there. We tried to make it kind of light and elegant, and uh, I think it was fairly successful in that sense. Uh, at Shibnagar University, where we've had a, a major role including master planning, uh, we still have one major building <coughs> under construction, which is the business building, which is not steel. Uh, it's a, a very sort of, what shall I say, <coughs> it's a very expected but still delightful <coughs> concrete and masonry uh, building done in the modern idiom. It's got a sense of place, it's got a sense of permanence, which uh, I'm not saying you can't get with steel, but that was sort of inherent in, in that particular one. This building, which has uh, won several awards, I'm glad to say, is their uh, indoor sports stadium, done completely in steel. And you see here the undulating glass facade at the front, which kind of welcomes you in a playful way, with some uh, perforated metal, uh, with all the artwork related to sports. That's the sort of pavilion style, as I call it, of a two-story, uh, tall bay uh, sports facility with various uh, indoor sports. It also, of course, serves the dual purpose of being a gathering place for students, uh, not necessarily only for sports activities. We punched the roof to bring some uh, lightness and light through at the canopy level. And then we wanted the building to glow at night, and therefore the facades were designed the way they are, with minimum interruption from the from the uh, V-shaped uh, column supports holding up the uh, projecting roof structure. There you have an inside view. Uh, we think it's uh, you know very appropriate for a sports facility. It's straightforward. It's elegant. It serves the purpose. And then the the additional part of it, <coughs> excuse me, is that uh, the the overall structure has allowed us in these tall spaces to infill, continue the elements of steel, such as the stair that you see there. And uh, those are some more detailed shots of the same thing. So the idea here, again, just to capitalize, it was a, a, a big canopy with a glass facade popped under it with a big volumetric um, box that serves the sports facilities. Uh, like in most of our works, uh, I'd like to think uh, the successful ideas, the, the elegant ones, the simple ones where you stick to a notion and then figure out a way to execute. Some more shots of the inside looking down. There are concrete uh, elements, uh, as you can tell in there, in terms of how the structures go. Uh, this is a project that uh, uh, I did uh, shortly before coming to the States uh, in 2014, late 2014. Uh, it's a, is there a problem with the with the uh, slide here, can we get the whole slide in? Uh, probably not, that's fine. So uh, the, the introduction to it is to say that there's a real, a real connection between the origin of the idea, even at the interview level, and the use of steel. In the, the back, the big white building is one of those old community college uh, classroom buildings on two levels, site drops off in the back. And they wanted an addition for the administrative function in this particular project because they were going to open up a new school, uh, an undergraduate school for advanced students who after they went to that school could do just one year in community college and be prepared for senior college. So there was a particular purpose to it. And it occurred to us, uh, and we tried to do this because we did lots of these projects where they called them hard working projects where the budgets are tight, sometimes there are renovations and additions, and this is one of them, where you figure out a way to bring two buildings together. And just intuitively, I've always had the sense of not banging two things against each other, but releasing them and allowing the space between to be the connection, and thereby also giving the building a certain life, which it wouldn't have otherwise, by giving it a functional space. And in this case, 
we uh, built a steel building. Everything at the bottom of the slide is uh, offices in that new corridor and the student convenient place at the left side end. Uh, and we did this street through the building, which also lets you walk through the building as if it's a sidewalk that happens to be covered to promote the notion of interconnectivity between campus buildings, which I think any campus should try and do. Uh, so here you see the campus in North Carolina, which is uh, home base for brick. Uh, many, many of our structures, there were steel frames and, uh, and brick uh, exteriors done in different ways. So on the right side, you see the brick uh, infill coming into light. We used the Fibonacci series modulation for the brick coursing. Uh, just a very delightful side story. One of the masons came up to me one day and he said he was an artist. I said, great, glad you're a mason on this project. He said, I think, I think you should be glad because I know all about the Fibonacci series. So it was a delightful conversation between a guy who was kind of tough looking in blue jeans, white t-shirt, big hands and he was talking about the Fibonacci series. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a nice world that you live in when things like that happen. So there's an there's a obvious uh, expression of the light steel structure. Uh, the existing building is poking through on the left side. You see its, uh, you see its old composite uh, panel colonnade which it had over there. So the new colonnade is uh, going side by side with where the old colonnade used to be, which we, of course, ripped out. You see this at the end, the old building on the right, the new building on the left, and the steel fabricated uh, walkway in the middle of the street. And it's elevated, so you let the north light from that side uh, continuously and in a very sort of uh, restricted way, punched openings on this side for the southern exposure. So in the morning, you get some bright sun coming in as the sun travels, but during the rest of the time, you always have wonderful southern light coming in. Uh, the steel expression sort of continues throughout in the language of the handrails, the canopy on the left, which is a combination of steel and aluminum, of course, just like the structures and the curtain wall. But you see the ivies and the steel popping through that top there. So this is the street with the new building on the left with its uh, I-beams just very simply and elegantly expressed. Uh, a very simple roof of corrugated deck showing up, exposed. I wish I had a shot showing the top because it's really quite, quite interesting. And the north light is there, the south light is on this side. And what I particularly like working with our structural engineer, who I think was half an architect, as many of them are, uh, I wanted everything on this side to be very, very minor so we could place these five columns adjacent to the old colonnade columns that used to be there and not restrict them, but just go ahead and pop them there. So the steel on this side takes that structure across and, and it bears on a, on a very lightweight or lightweight looking uh, beam structure held up by the five columns. So the old building is not supporting any element of the roof. And then as it comes and rests on the old parapet, there's just a zipper expansion joint that goes from two sides vertical, horizontal, and back there. So it worked out quite nicely, and then we sort of enhanced the structure in a very simple way with those uh, uh, pencil lights uh, that sort of go staccato rhythm to enhance the rhythmic nature of the, of the columns. Uh, another thing to point out, where steel and concrete are brothers and sisters and they should be uh, working together. Very tight budget. Uh, we did a polished concrete floor. And uh, initially there was some resistance because there's a sense for most clients that you would understand to get perfection in flooring. In India you use stone without thinking, thinking about it because it's there. In the States you don't. Uh, it's tough to get stone in most projects. So most, most of our projects even in the States were quite tight in, in budget. For those of you who have a comparable measure in your minds, this was a $150 a square foot building in 2013 completion. So it was really a, a, quite a lot of stuff for about 40,000 square feet, including the old building, which was completely renovated into very, very nice functional classrooms. So this is sort of celebrating steel. I, I just love this project uh, simply because it was so nicely put together by the structural and architectural team working with 
together, and I really enjoyed the experience. That's the uh, room at the front of the building, the left side of the floor plan that I showed you, which is where the students can congregate as multi-purpose for meetings, lunches, celebrations. It's now become the most popular meeting, indoor meeting space on campus, even though they have two or three auditoriums, because it's got this information to it. And again, you can see the steel structure and the mechanical system peeking through there. Uh, and we designed these uh, fabricated custom, <coughs> excuse me, sound attenuating volume sales to give the place some acoustic value and also give a sense of celebration. That's a detail. Now, this is the kind of thing that I think can happen with steel, which really cannot happen with most other materials. Uh, you can bring things together in a very precise, element where you can you can show the joints, you can you know, struggle over where you want to have the connections and how you want to execute, uh, which I think is really enjoyable and a very intrinsic part of school design. You have these opportunities. Uh, this is a project in Charlotte where uh, we live and had our practice. And uh, a small group of developers, two of them developers partners, and two of them were real estate appraisers, they decided to do an investment and build a building in South End, which is a warehouse district, which is now the place that everyone wants to live. So we were inspired by the notion of it being, uh, uh, being a uh, warehouse district. The building had this sense of uh, strength and simplicity and really, really high economy. This one was $105 a square foot. Very, very tight project. Uh, so everything we did was uh, very thoughtful in terms of use of materials and systems. So th at the bottom, there's a storefront along the main street. <coughs> and everything else is uh, leased out. This, uh, the, the, the first floor, or the second floor of the states, uh, is, is one tenant. And then the top two floors, including the loft at top, is one unit. So each of these are single units with a mezzanine that takes you up to the loft. And uh, ours was right there, which we really enjoyed. So uh, the aesthetic, again, includes the sense not only of the steel structure, uh, which was erected. Uh, actually, the building was completed in under 11 months, if I remember correctly. Steel framework are very fast. The, the foundations were complex, the soil was poor. Uh, and you'll see perhaps in one of the shots that there's a lot of steel up on the top to compensate for not doing extraordinarily deep and big footings. So the, the warehouse aesthetic is there in combination with the, you know, very simple material. This is the factory material, it's just corrugated steel and brick, which you sort of don't even think about, you just use it very easily in terms of the content. So we spend some money at the top with a little bit of detail. Uh, you see the expression there of the loft. Uh, we needed to make it attractive to bring in the tenant owners. And then at the top, in order to have a landmark expression but also to increase the footprint, we did a couple of cantilevers at the end. So when you come down the street in that direction, you recognize the building instantly. And then this is the kind of storefront uh, vitality that we wanted to bring. There were a lot of uh, missives given to us by the city of Charlotte urban planning of which we were also a part, to sort of remember that in the future these were all going to become very pedestrian streets, a lovely neighborhood. And uh, that's beginning to happen. So we gave attention to these punched openings here, so these are individual stores eventually. Uh, and then the canopies, etc., again, very utilitarian, made out of steel. The brackets and the supports very simply shown, just like you would see in an old warehouse. So those are some expressions. This was our office, which was on the top loft floor. And you can see the exposed steel, which we had a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, that's it, really. We've got some ongoing projects. I'll go through it very quickly. Do I have a minute or so? Uh, that's our aquarium at Science City, which we're working on with Yukon, with uh, several over here. And in the middle, where the atrium is and the canopy, are uh, two non-steel elements. This is the assembly that the contractor has done of the structure for that middle part in steel trusses, uh, designed with our colleagues. Uh, we are getting ready to do 
the space science galleries on the design of the planetarium is going to be uh, a sort of difficult and elegant steel structure. We're doing some museums in the smaller places in the science museum of uh, Gujarat. This is in Rajkot. We've got a textile structure with a single column of support in the middle made out of steel, which went out of the picture. We did the Eden Gardens, another exploration. You saw Kunal earlier on from HCP. This was a renovation and expansion that we did. Uh, I think it was the last one done, including some ideas for how the night lighting would be done. Those are the two stands we did. It's a combination of concrete and steel, the, the roof structure is steel. And then we've got a bunch of tourism projects where steel is used in some restricted, elegant, uh, sort of uh, showplace kind of ways. We did this bridge. And we're currently working on a project in Surat, which has this wonderful trellis work of steel, so that in between a series of buildings which are for public use, both retail and entertainment, there's this bazaar-like atmosphere with a very prominent steel structure. And we're also working on a, on a major uh, office building proposal. It's not a project yet, where there are three towers uh, connected with uh, bridges. Uh, we, we a pretty shoulder towers with primarily concrete and building elements of steel to give it its character, such as the bridges. Thanks very much.